Hello everyone, I'm Tree. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about Gabor Mata and what I learned from him. But before we do that I want to announce a giveaway. I want to paint for you your very own personalized Christmas card. Something like this. Um, this is, well, me and my dog. <laughs> um, I painted this uh, just so you can see the possibilities. I'm going to paint you and your immediate family if you're married, have kids, if you have a pet. I'm going to create a unique design inspired by, well, you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to consult you on the design, see if you're happy with it. I'm going to paint it and at the end I'm going to create a PDF so you can print it at home on good quality paper and have your very own hand-painted Christmas cards this year. About three years ago I participated in a Christmas market and I created some cute paintings, cute tiny paintings as decorations for the Christmas tree. I sold a few of them, but I still had quite a lot. And I hitchhiked from Spain to England with my dog in December. It was like, I think the 15th of December when I left, uh, when I left Spain. And it took me like six days to get to England. And on, on the road, uh, I, w I shared most of them with people. It was... It, it brings a lot of joy even now when I think about it. It was me with a huge backpack and my dog hitchhiking. And whenever somebody stopped and helped and gave us a ride, at the end of the ride, I would just bring, just bring out this bag and I would go like, choose one. <laughs> and they would take out the painting and go, oh, this is cute. And yeah, it's for your Christmas tree. And, uh, by the time I got to England, I had, I think I had two left and I gave them to a friend who came to pick me up from the ferry to, well, to my new home. I remember standing with my dog and waiting for the ferry to cross over to England. And there was a really rude customer who had some issues with an online booking and the measurements for the car. And he was asked, well, to pay more because when he booked online, apparently he he didn't properly booked, measured the car and it was well, more, more expensive and he was really angry and he was really rude to, uh, to the lady behind the counter and uh, it created just like a whole scene of, you know, arguments and fighting and the lady felt really upset and she brought the boss and you know then the boss argued with him and it was just like and after a few minutes he left and the the three ladies were just standing there and kind of trying to you know process everything that happened and i went and gave them each a cute a cute Christmassy decoration and it really cheered them up, you know, like it, it, it was only for like a few seconds, but it really cheered them up, you know, it was like, so they, they were so surprised, you know, after all the anger, you know, they got and just getting a bit of Christmas cheer. I think it really brightened their day, you know, I think it really did. This year, I won't be able to bring joy to so many people, but I can do it for at least three of you. I'm going to randomly select three people, one from my YouTube audience, one from my Facebook audience, and one from my Instagram audience. 
if you choose to participate within all three you'll just get more chances to win follow the rules below good luck and i'm really excited to paint for you wish you a good day i redesigned my website in the spirit of christmas so i thought i would use the decorations to shoot this video for those of you who don't know gabor mate is a canadian physician he was born in hungary and moved to Canada fleeing from the Nazi regime when he was very young. He is now retired. He has a long career of working family practice and a lot of work with addicts. He's written a few books the common theme is the, the mind-body relation into human health. Modern medicine kind of ignores the mind part when it comes to physical health. Gabor Mate brings it back into our focus with a lot of experience, a lot of experience and study behind it. I don't have the vocabulary nor the experience to talk about this. So if you want to learn, I suggest you listen to him. He's a good speaker and he has a lot of wisdom. You may also want to read In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts. Hold on to your kids. And another one I didn't get the chance to read yet, um, When the Body Says No. If you want to make sure that his books are for you, I suggest you watch this, it's a good place to start. But before you do that, let me tell you what I took from him. The first thing that I learned from Gabor Mata is that addiction comes from pain. I struggled, well, maybe... I wouldn't call it so much as a struggle, but addiction was a big part of my life. Well, my second half of my life. <laughs> it started with chocolate, sugar, or to be more specific, the combination of sugar and fat. That's what actually does it for you. Fat and sugar combined. That, that will give you a boost of serotonin. Um, it continued with uh, tobacco and alcohol and bad relationships, definitely that too. Dr. Mata's definition of addiction is really useful. An addiction is a behavior that an individual engages in, which offers pleasure or relief and he keeps pursuing despite negative consequences. There is a whole wide range of things we do that fall under this category. And it is truly useful to look with an open and compassionate mind. The second thing that Doc, that Dr. Mata taught me is that addiction is rooted in, in trauma and while most people think of trauma as really horrible things that happen and really horrible things do happen and those usually make people end up with really severe addictions and really harmful ones as well. Inner pain is so great that it manifests in a really heavy physical pain. Most people are traumatized to some extent because humans are imperfect. People grow up but they don't really mature and they have children of their own which they raise to the best of their extenses. But not being fully matured yet, they carry their own traumas and their own 
unresolved issues which they pass along to their, to their children unwillingly. Being open-minded and inquiring about your own wounded child helps you see when you act from that perspective. Uh, Gabor Mata has a really good question for you to ask whenever you find yourself stressed in any way. Whenever you find yourself in unpleasant emotions. He encourages you to ask yourself, who do I think I am? Whenever we are rejected, do we feel hurt because another human being did not like us? It's not like we like everyone, so it's perfectly natural for some people to like us and others to not. The reason we feel hurt is because it triggers a, a feeling. It triggers an emotion that is ingrained within our psyche from when we were children and we were rejected by our parents. It taught me a lot about child development. How our, how our brain forms. Human beings are very, very complicated. It takes us more than a year to learn to walk. Most beings on this earth are self-sufficient within the first two years of life. Human beings are highly dependent on their, on their, on their parents for the first at least five years of their lives. The human brain is so complex that it needs seven years to fully create the, the structure of the world. Within the first seven years of, of a child's life, the brain is kind of in like, it's, it's almost in a hypnotic state. It still doesn't understand what the world is and what its place is and what is expected of him and how to deal with it. And in this first seven years, it just absorbs everything around it and makes connections between all the information that it gets. And if it, it creates meanings and from patterns, from events, and when it's in when when its caregivers fail to give to set a good example, the child is not aware of it. So it will take an angry response from a parent as an insufficiency within itself. It won't recognize it as wrong behavior within the parent. It will recognize it as insufficiency within itself. And the more stressful and difficult the environment is for the parents, more dysfunctional patterns and more distorted meanings will be ingrained within the child's brain. And the thing is, the brain uses those patterns it learns within the first seven years of its life. It uses them to deal with events later on in life. So when you're faced with a similar event, your brain goes back to those coping mechanisms. It goes, well, this is how I dealt with rejection when I was a kid. This is how I dealt with anger when I was a kid. This is how I dealt with that. And it, well, basically plays out the same response. It's, it is within our power to observe it and to understand it, to see where it comes from. 
and to pay attention to when it rises and to teach basically ourselves to react in a different way to remind ourselves that we are not that little wounded child there's no need for shame there's no need for anger now it is within our power to do something about it when we were kids it wasn't within our power to stand up for ourselves and to say no it is important for our well-being to do this it is important to recognize when we were wrong as kids and it's not about blame it's about understanding and healing because the alternative is to continue to live in shame in insufficiency and other conclusions we we made as little children unaware when we watch ourselves with compassion and understanding addictions tend to lose their grip because the huge part of addiction actually the core emotion that triggers addiction is shame and we tend to place shame on ourselves every time we cave into an addictive pattern into an addictive behavior a first good step is to honestly watch ourselves not pretend not hide and not judge what fascinates me about Mata's work is that he goes really deep following this trauma and not only the personal pain we experienced as little children but how traumatic events from our parents and grandparents get passed down to us to our genes coming from a traumatic background my own personal traumas like the ones i experienced as a child are perhaps are not huge and some people would call them normal because because parents used force as a means of educating children i think some of them still do and it's a shame true education stems from example not what you say not what you make your children do but there are traumas within my body that are not mine there are traumas within my body that come from my grandmother that come from my father that come from my mother they, they've always been there i just thought it was me you know <laughs> mm. It took me quite a while to realize those are not mine. Well, I have to well work with them. They're, they're mine now, but not from my own lifetime. It's, I, I think that's what fascinates me about Mata's work is that his work, although based within science, as he is a physician, you know, a doctor, and he goes through the scientific method of observing, experimenting, analyzing results. He, he took the he took the well you could say spiritual approach. I can't help but think about this like karma like Sadhguru says, karma is memory and it is, it's like all the memories are within us and it is a powerful thing to know because I think 
Once you know it, you have the power to heal them, not pass them on anymore. Because once you deal with them, once you heal them within you, the next generation doesn't have to. I sometimes think that that's a big reason why people have children. So they can pass on their burdens to them. It's like, I couldn't deal with this, you deal with it. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Introspection, silence, meditation, observing, mindfulness. These are all tools you can use to discover your addictions and to find who you are when you're not addicted. Because in the end that's what it's all about, discovering the real you. Discover what makes the real you. Discover who you are when you're not addicted. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, um, subscribe if you want to support, like if you like, patron an artist, you can do that for only 2 euros a month, it will help me, well, pay my rent and keep on creating, <laughs> hopefully, if not it's okay, I can. I'll just keep creating anyway. Thanks again, wish you all the best and grow a little every day.